you do with the stock of Viking Holdings, the destination-focused cruise play best known for its river cruises in Europe? Today, Viking reported Wall Street didn't really like the results, even though I thought it was a strong set of numbers. Management had some very good things to say about bookings momentum for the rest of 2024 and 2025. However, their earnings per share came in light, and they also had a slight occupancy rate miss, throwing the fact that the stock was up big going the quarter, and you can understand why people use this as an excuse to ring the register. And that sent the stock down nearly 9%. Earlier today, we got a chance to speak with Tor Hagen. He's the chairman and CEO of Viking Holdings. Take a look. Mr. Hagen, this is your first time on Mad Money, and I wanted people to be introduced to the great Viking because you're quite different from the other cruise lines that we may have been looking at. So tell us a little Viking 101, please. Like you said, it, we, we feel we are different. As a matter of fact, we are so different that we have decided to drop the word cruise from our name. So we now call ourselves Viking Holdings, but we're really different from, from the other guy. The other guys are great too, but we appeal to a totally different uh, segment of the population and we have a very different product. So you can say, we, we, we like to appeal to uh, grown-ups, 55-year-old plus, with time, money, and above all, curiosity. So we call ourselves the thinking persons and then we use the ugly word cruise, but you know, we had thinking person's journey, really. And that has served as well. But we also want to point out that uh, there are no children running around, not that there's anything wrong with children, and there's no gambling. And I also understand there's no nickel and diming. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, many, many of these big guys, they, they've, they've made larger and larger ships, and they've added more and more features. And of course, it's great to take your grandkids on a on a roller coaster, on a, a, a in a car, on a on a, on a big ship. But our guests are people who are tired of all of that. They're tired of their own children. They're even tired of their own grandchildren. But they want to experience things. And I mean, that's that's a trend in today's life. The modern luxury is that you can have experiences, and that's what we deliver. And we started on the rivers uh, of all places in Russia, 27 years ago. Uh, now we don't do a lot of business in Russia today, but that was a start. That was a start of Viking, and uh, uh, I've known the ocean cruise business since I was much younger. But what we have been able to deliver is really quite spectacular, and our guest rate is number one by very by by all means. Now, can you give us a sense about whether the people over 55, the people who are uh, signing up? view you as a value offering or do they accept the fact that you're premium and don't necessarily come in at a lower price and they're willing to pay for it because it's such an amazing experience? Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think, uh, of course, it's, you know, dollars off and all that attracts customers. But we feel it's very important that when people go on Viking, they know exactly what it costs, no surprises, pay a full price, and we get, we get fair, fair value, don't get me wrong. Uh, but but uh, there shouldn't be nickel and dime, and you shouldn't come aboard a ship and experience that you are there to be fleeced. And that, I think, is a business model of a few other people. You know, I do want to uh, mention that the other cruise lines were really totally attuned to how booked they are. In a seminal moment in your conference call, you talk about how sometimes you don't want to race your bookings because you want to optimize. You want to keep some back. I'm not sure all the analysts understand that, but you actually can do that because there might be some latecomers who are willing to pay more. Well, not only that, but I mean, we have, we have been booking quite far ahead, quite frankly. And if, uh, if we look into 2025, we have already sold out 55% of our capacity for, 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 for next year. And you can say that's a tad on the high side because it's nice to have a little bit of uh, goods on the shelves when you start the new year too. Uh, so, so, so I think we are happy. Of course, one is always happy when bookings are high, but I think it's nice to be able to also have some goods available uh, as people make their decisions later on in the season. Uh, one of the things that I think is quite exciting is for this group of people that you're mentioning who do want, don't mind paying full price, world-class lectures, cultural partnerships, these are things that are almost antithetical to Wall Street. They don't think there's enough people who actually still want to learn. It's really quite the opposite, isn't it, sir? Absolutely. And 
No, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, currently outside the target group myself, I think, on the high end of the group. But heck, you know, I think we all like to learn. If there's a day, we should try, try all to be a little bit wiser when that is uh, done. And of course, we have been very fortunate to have a, a lot of cultural affiliations. Uh, um, we are particularly pr proud of one we have had in, in the UK, the Downton Abbey, Highclere Castle. But everywhere we have these kind of relationships where we have exclusive access. Uh, and and this is people want to experience. Now you can say, not always want to be a lord or an earl, but, uh, but it's nice to see how these guys uh, used to live at least. Well, I've got to tell you, when I look at what, what you're doing, I realize that we all do. Baby boomers, people in the generation uh, that are uh, my generation, we have disposable income. But we don't want to just dispose it. And we don't want to just take a trip to nowhere. What we would want to do is learn, have beauty, but also meet other people, like-minded people. It does seem yeah, yeah. to be that you have a cultured group, of which I have to tell you, I, I want a cultured group when I go on a cruise. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you make the point uh, immensely, immensely well. And I think when you, when, uh, when you have lived a long life, you start to realize there's really one scarce resource, truly scarce resource, and that is time. And then I say, one shouldn't waste one time doing stupid things. One should waste, one, one should spend one time getting the, uh, something out of it. And that's why I think, I, I think we have such a great product to offer. I must admit, I took my first vacation in 27 years, a year and a half ago, and uh, I'm a cheapskate, so I, I went on our own Antarctica cruise uh, together with my neighbors and my best friend. And of course, it was a phenomenal e experience uh, to be in one's own, on one's own little yacht. But it's that this type of stuff that our guests want. And you can go along the rivers of Europe. And of course, that's where the civilizations develop and, uh, and, uh, and have exactly the type of experiences you, you, one should have when one gets to a, to a certain point in life. And our ocean cruises, which we started in 2014, we did it differently. As you said, no children, uh, no casinos. People say, you must be nuts. You have to get that extra revenue from the casinos. I bet you if you, if you did the calculation of what the space costs and what the croupiers cost and all that, it's not so much le left over, but it, it, it leaves a lot of noise our ships are quiet, subdued, elegant, and you can go there to relax. So right. it was quite fantastic. We started then with two ships in 2004, or one ship in 2014. Now we have 10, and you know, we are rated number one by all these wonderful magazines. And we have another 10 ships coming, so oh, we can't really complain. That's very good. Well, I'm excited about your company. I'm glad you came on us first. It means a great deal to me. I want to thank Tor Hagen, who's the chairman and CEO of Viking. Sir, it is really great to have you on the show. Just fabulous. Well, thank you very much for having us. And uh, you know where to go next. You betcha. Thank you so much. We're going to be back at the break. Coming up, fortune favors the brands. Should investors feel at home with the security stock? Find out next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.